Today's video is all about Liverpool. Last year, they missed out on the Champions League, a slightly disappointing campaign for them. But this year, they've already made two fantastic additions to their squad. McAllister from Brighton and Dominic Zabaslai. I'm going to butcher that name about 100 times in this video from RB Leipzig. So today's video, what we are going to be doing is adding some more additions to that squad. We're going to be looking for a defender, but possibly another midfielder for Liverpool, tighten up that midfield and also also, we are going to be predicting what Jurgen Klopp will be doing with his 4-3-3 next season. Based off what they've already did on the back end of last season, and then what we're going to do is give it a slight tweak and give them a slight push, and hopefully we can have an elite rebuild on FM23. Without the further hold up, let's go. Now, let's address the little elephant in the room or a big one. You may be wondering where have I been exactly and totally honest, I've been over on Twitch. Now, what I've got on the screen right now quickly is what we've been doing on Twitch is taking us 24 seasons at the moment and it's still going. So we're 24 seasons in, we've won 28 trophies and the aim of the save so far is to select teams in the top seven leagues in Europe that have never won the top tier title and then obviously we're trying to win it with them. So as you can see, we've done it with Everton, Wren, Rio Ave, Bukum, De Grashap in the Netherlands and currently at Sassuolo where we accidentally won the Serie A in our first season so we're just going to give it another push and keep going and going and then our last stop will be in Spain selecting a team that have never won the La Liga of course and trying to win it with them that's why I spend most of my days and make sure you are following so come over on Twitch do not miss out on this fantastic save don't miss the ending are we going to South are we going to go to South America we don't know but make sure you are following over on Twitch and also if you do want to continue to support this channel because we are back make sure you check out the patreon and support the patreon as well but let's go back to anfield for our rebuild so as you can see we've trimmed the squad massively and i've also added my own additions if you do want this database the database link will be in the description um disclaimer it is sort it out si's uh database and then what i've done i've gone into the editor and i've added some of the transfers that i think are really realistic in real life for Liverpool but so far in real life what Liverpool have done they've signed Alexis McAllister from Brighton around 35 million pound an absolute bargain I believe he had a release clause which is why it was so cheap and it's given them the flexibility to improve in other areas as well they can spend in other areas as we have seen with Dominic Sabaslai I, I mean I pronounced it differently in the intro I'm probably going to <laughs> announce it differently again sometime during this video but they've um, spent some big money on Dominic around 70 to 80 maybe even 60 million pound I'm not exactly sure about the money in football these days prices are always different wherever you look but we've got him in midfield and now we are looking to strengthen the squad we're going to add two more players two more players I've also got an Arsenal rebuild as well so look out for that where I've added four players so Liverpool they've got four players Arsenal also have four new signings spoiler alert one is Declan Rice and the other is Kai Havertz so the next stop was to find out what exactly is needed for this Liverpool squad. Now, I watched a very good video, Sensible Transfers by The Athletic, and I thought, actually, they have it spot on. So, of course, adding Dominic to the squad, Alexis McAllister to the squad as well. We also wanted to add another midfielder, possibly, though, possibly someone that can cover for Fabinho. Fabinho was a little off form. If you speak to Liverpool fans, they would say that Fabinho was off form. So possibly we can look to strengthen in that area as well. And a different profile to Sabaslai and McAllister. Not that McAllister and Sabaslai are actually the same profile, but they're more the, um, they're more going to operate in advanced areas and also likely to create for Liverpool, help Liverpool create and score some goals. So we are looking for a midfielder in that uh, sort of deeper area. So there was Toram, but I believe Toram is actually best in central midfield where he can progress with the ball. Another option was Manu Kone, 
Kone, which is the person that I've actually added to this Liverpool squad. So here is Manu Kone. As you can see, he's got some decent, I mean, his position isn't great, but he's only 22. That can improve in football manager, but he's got good technique, good tackling, good passing, good work rate, dribbling as well. He stands at six foot one. He's got a very, very good physical presence to him, not just only in FM, but in real life as well. Apparently, they are interested. It was either Casado, Kone, Torab. I mean, there's a bunch of midfielders that people are throwing out, but I've gone for Manu, uh, Manu Kone, someone that can operate in deeper areas and also can provide backup for Fabinho. Another area that I thought Liverpool would or should look for and the Athletic, I mean, they also agree, but I did copy their video, is a defender. Now, Liverpool have made a few signings, but they haven't actually made any homegrown signings. And also the outgoings as well. They've let go of players like Alex... Uh, Alex Chamberlain, someone that is homegrown. Reese Williams is probably someone that they're looking to sell. I've got rid of Nathan uh, Nathan Phillips, Adam Lewis, Paul Glatzel, Seth Van Den Berg, not that he was homegrown. So I've got rid of players. I have got rid of players. I trimmed the squad. Calvin Ramsey is also on loan to Preston, but we needed a defender. So... Liverpool on the right hand side they've got Joe Matip they've got Konate that can operate on the right hand side also Joe Gomez if they needed a backup for the right back uh, situation as well not that they have many options but Fabinho can slot in there but also Joe Gomez now when you look on the left hand side of the defence they are pretty pretty light they've got one backup for um, Robertson which is Timisikas I'm definitely mispronounced that name Timisikas Timisikas yeah butchered but also the left side of the center back they've only really got one solid option which is Virgil van Dijk so we needed someone that can play left back and left-sided of the back four. Liverpool's tactic last year, now they do try and transition into a sort of back three. I'm, I've just shown you the tactic, but they are kind of transitioned into a back three with Trent Alexander-Arnold, of course, inverting, being a double uh, pivot with Fabinho, and then Robertson operates on the back three, which is kind of unlike Robertson. Robertson likes to overlap and get further forward as well. So we are going to try and make sure we can also tweak that and add that into the tactic as well but we do need someone that can play as part of the back three on the left hand side or as that Virgil van Dijk replacement now I feel the perfect perfect option would be Levi Colwell it's going to be difficult to get him from Chelsea I'm guessing he had a very very solid season at Brighton left footed can play left side of the back four but also can play on the left side of the back three as well another one physically imposing six foot two got decent jumper reach according to the game but as we know in real life he's a very good defender but also someone that is very very confident on the ball again an added bonus for someone that can operate on the back three on the left side of the back three or on the left side of the back four replacing Virgil van Dijk so the Liverpool squad for the 23-24 season if they listen to me would be Alisson and Kelleher as the goalkeepers and then uh, for central defence we've got Virgil van Dijk Konate Matip Joe Gomez and Colwell for the left hand side of that back two we've got uh, Colwell and Virgil van Dijk and then obviously on the right hand side we've got a little bit more options with Konate Matip and Gomez Fabinho can just drop in there if needed to right back we've got Trent Fabinho Gomez that can operate Stefan Bassett I mean, according to FM, he can play there, but we, I've yet to see that in first team football in real life. For left back, we've got Cole Will, we've got uh, Robertson, and we've got Tissamir Cass as well. Definitely butchered that name. Holding midfield, we've got Fabinho and we've got Manu Kane. Back up, we can have Jordan Henderson for our midfield too. We've got a few options. We've got Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott can also operate on the right hand side. Shabaslai, Thiago, Henderson, McAllister as well. Now, moving on to the attacking line, we've got plenty of options, plenty of fluid options as well. Lots of versatility here. Mo Salah, Darwin Nunes, Jota, Diaz, Gakpo, Elliot, and of course, Jones can operate as part of that front three. So what we are going to do right now is break down the tactic, but also we've got two cup finals to play. We've got an FA Cup final, but also a European Cup final to play as well in this video. So you guys can actually see how the tactic plays out. So let's break down the tactic. So here we are with the Liverpool tactic and what we are going to do is break it down. And as I do, I'm going to be giving you three 
different variations. We've got the main one. We've got the one when you're playing big teams away from home. So, you know, the Manchester Cities, the Real Madrid, the Manchester United, Arsenal now. <laughs> and of course, we've got one that's it's, it's the same as the first one, but it's just a bit more slowed down, a bit more chilled. Now, I use this. I've actually got my notes here. I've got notes. I use this after uh around december around december times you know when the fixture gets a bit heavy and your team's kind of drops form that's when i kind of switch to this the slow down version rather than obviously everything just gagging press gagging so this is the team that i've gone for the predicted first 11 or you can say 10 because we have no striker i wasn't actually sure on which striker liverpool would go for so we've got allison in goal trent right back robertson left back canate and Vi and van dyke at center back of course allison operating as the sweeper keeper Trent Alexander-Arnold is the inverted wing back so he can come inside and make that box midfield that we've seen from Liverpool towards the back end of last season and then we've got Robertson here on the fence who is going to make a back three so you can see I dare in possession when we do have the ball we want Trent to move in there and then we want Robertson just to stay with the back line now depending on the ball side if the ball's on the right hand side of course we want the back three to kind of shift over just like this and then when the ball's on the left hand side I mean, do I really need to? But I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> we want the defence line, if it's going to work, come on Van Dyke, move over. And then we want the uh, back line to shift over to the left-hand side once the ball does make its way to the left-hand side. In defensive midfield, we have Fabinho, who's going to be marking tighter. Now, he's going to have a different role when uh, you play against the big teams away from home. He's going to be more of the ball-winning midfielder. When you are playing against Real Madrid and Arsenal, Real Madrid, why do I keep saying Madrid? When you are playing the teams like uh, Man City and Arsenal, they are going to be seeing a lot of the ball. They are possession-based. So I did turn Fabinho into a ball-winning midfielder because we're going to see less of the ball and then of course we want to win the ball we don't want Arsenal and Man City to be confident and comfortable on the ball in front of our defence now moving into midfield we have McAllister just operating as the standard central midfield he's going to be the versatile link between defence and attack or midfield and attack so if we do actually read the central midfield role because I know a lot of you is not, are going to be like it's not glamorous enough it's not moving enough there's not enough movement it's not a box to box or a Roman playmaker where they actually have Rome from positions but the central midfielder is responsible for providing an industrious and versatile link between defense and the attack expected to perform a variety of tasks now that's that's important expected to perform a variety so he doesn't have one or two jobs he has a variety of jobs which I feel McAllister will have in that Liverpool midfield and he's going to have those tasks across the center of the pitch the, the central midfielder benefits from having the tactical awareness and technical ability to support Support both defence and attack and play as needed. With the support duty, the central midfielder will look to balance his attacking and defensive responsibilities. He will get further forward when necessary, but he will mainly keep uh, to the centre of the pitch and will attempt to thread passes into the final third. Now, I feel that this does describe the McAllister role in Liverpool's team predicting <laughs> perfectly and then now moving over to Sabaslav where he's actually got the same role but on attack and he's actually got some uh, well he's got a lot more added instructions so he's going to be taking more risks dribbling more running wide with the ball shooting more often staying wider and marking tighter so when he does have the ball I mean we've given him the creative freedom to run wide with the ball he's going to support Mo Salah so of course Alexander Arnold is going to be coming inside a lot more often so Salah is going to need support on the right hand side which Sabaslai will be Sabaslai in real life he's actually very good with this sort of movements of running and overlapping so this is something that we could see for Liverpool which is again why I've got run wide so hopefully when he does have the ball he would run wide and make that sort of overlapping movement allowing Salah to then come inside and be that sort of second number nine he's going to be taking more risk dribbling more but also what is dangerous from Domin uh, Dominic Sabaslai here is his long shots he's very very good with his long shots so I do want to see those long shots in the tactic. Now, lastly, the attacking third, we do have Mo Salah, Salah as the inside forward on attack, trying to get the best out of him once again. Now, he's got stay wider again, adding width to the tactic because Trent Alexander-Arnold is going to be very, very used to coming inside. And it's the same with Diaz because Robertson isn't going to be getting further forward and being that supply on the left-hand side, I do feel is going to be important during build-up phases for them to stay wider. Now, when it comes to chance creation they're still going to be coming inside like they usually do but during build-up it's important for these players to stay
stay wide during the build-up, then they can make their movement. Now, lastly, up front, it depends who's actually playing here. Is it Cody Gakpo? Is it Diego Jota? If it's either of those two, I've gone for the deep line forward, but... If it is Darwin Nunes, then he's got to be a pressing forward on support. Now, in Football Manager, I have set it, I've set it automatically, which you could do here. Just go to Personalize and then change the role. And for Darwin Nunes, we have gone for pressing forward on support. Now, for the team instructions, for the mentality, we've gone for positive. For the attacking width, we've actually gone for bang, narrow. Just everything is very narrow and there's a reason for it. Um, I did use standard and I didn't feel it does the best with this tactic. And it didn't do best of getting the shape as well of this back three shape. And then Alexander Arnold coming inside in the middle as well, making that inverted movement. I felt it was better for us to build in this narrow, uh, just build in the center areas of the pitch, allowing these people to then, or these people, these players then to make the movements that we want them to. So Robertson to make that movement to come inside and make him be involved in the back three. And then Alexandra Arnold to be in a double pivot with Fabinho. Approach play, pass into space, get the ball further forward, play out from the back, but also focus play down the right hand side, of course. I mean, no real explanation needed. Our best players on the right hand side. Again, we don't have much attacking support down the left hand side with Robertson on defense and McAllister on support. So we do want to build up and play down that right hand side. Not necessarily build up but attack down that right hand side passing directness shorter tempo higher that suits the gag and pressing and obviously the passing shorter it's just so we can get a bit more of the possession be more disciplined if i'm honest with you again it's one of those things that just felt it worked better than without and what i feel be more disciplined is doing is actually getting people to stick to the task rather than move from it so i feel it's very important for an example a mo salad to stay wider during build up because we don't have that width that natural width on the wider area so it's very very important for him to be disciplined during build up the same as Diaz so there are certain movements going forward I didn't want the team to break their shape and without it I felt they did break that shape now moving into transition we are going to counter press we are going to counter when we win the ball distribute the ball quickly and look for our center backs lastly out of possession we are going to go with the high press that much higher defensive line we all know liverpool love to use that much higher defensive line step up more much more uh trigger press and of course prevent that short goalkeeper distribution now when you are playing the big teams away from home as you can see fabinho has now gone to a ball winning midfielder but McAllister has also gone to a box to box midfielder we have dropped our defensive line by one the trigger press has gone to the left by one as well so rather than much more often it's now a more often and now of course in possession the passing directness has bumped up to standard but everything else is the same lastly for the slow down one i mean we've just slowed the pace down the tempo is now on standard and we are now working the ball into the box to adding that patience when we are trying to create our chances in the final third so that's the tactic but how did these new players get on how did sabasla how did McAllister? how did kone and the other players get on let's see So in all competitions, we won the Premier League, we won the Friendly Cup, not that, that it matters. In the Europa League, we're in the final against Newcastle and in the FA Cup, we do have the final against Manchester United, which we will play in today's video in the premier league we did score the most goals we had the most shots for the fewest shots against when it comes to possession we were in fourth place with 58 percent which is very very respectable for the most dribbles made i'm slightly disappointed by uh by this because we're not in the top eight and i'm not exactly sure why as we have run at the defense and being liverpool you would just assume that we would be there for the clean sheets we are in third place with 18 and for the fewest conceded it is us it is us now. For the player stats, the screen looks a bit different because of the skin. The link will be in the description below. For the highest average rating, Mo Salah, we also have Diaz, Gakpo and Sabatslai in the uh, top 10 list. Or we'll, we'll just give it the top 10. For the goals, Mo Salah did score 40 goals in 34 starts. Cody back, uh, Gakpo getting 22. Mo Salah with 16 man of the match award. Salah with 17 assists, but Dominic Sabatslai with 13. How did the new guys get on? So Dominic Sabaslai, if we look at him individually and just look at his stats, he managed to score 16 in all competitions, 19 assists as well in 43 games. That is a lot of goal contributions in his first season and he's got a lot of developing to do in this game as well. His average rating on 7.4. 
one. McAllister as well, if we do look at his stats, he got 11 goals in 10 games, very respectable with an average rating of 7.32. Very, very good season for him as well. Manu Kone, now he didn't actually start a lot of the games as you would have guessed it. Fabinho would have started a lot of the games. He started 28 games though, getting four goals, three assists and an average rating of 7.09. Very respectable. Levi Colwell, now lastly, we will look at his stats and he played 33 games, started 33 games, I should say with an average rating of 7.01. Now, if we do look at uh Levi Colwell, you can see that I've used him in various roles, left back and at centre back. He started 20 games at left back, 14 as a centre back. So Salah with 47 goals in all comps, Gakpo with 19, Lewis Diaz in 18, Swabberslide with 16, Darwin Nunes with 14, and McAllister with 11. The top creators, Swabberslide with 19 assists in all comps, Salah with 17, Diaz with 12, Gakpo with 11, and McAllister with 10. And now what we are going to do, let me make sure I check my to-do list. I've showed everything. Yes, yes. And yes, I didn't show you the schedule. So this is the schedule. These are some of the games. We'll just quickly skim through it because we've got to play the games. So we did beat Man United 3-1 away from home. We drew against Arsenal 1-1 away from home. Beat Tottenham 3-0 at home. Lose, uh, lost 2-1 away to Manchester City. We also lost 1-0 at home to Bournemouth, surprisingly. But we did smash Manchester City. 4-0 at home. We beat Real Madrid in the Champions League both legs. We drew against Manchester United 3-3 at home. By then, the league title was wrapped up and you can, I mean, the form after your league title was wrapped up is a bit suspect. But what we are going to do now is play this Europa League game with, well, against Newcastle <laughs> with Liverpool. We'll be using the main tactic as well, the 4-3-3, the first one. And this is the team, the strongest team. I mean, should we add? Okay, we'll add Levi into the team. And we'll also add Kone as well, just so you guys can see the new guys. The four new guys, McAllister, Sabasly, Kone and Cole Will are the new additions to Liverpool. Let's go. So team talk, hands in pockets. There we go. We are going to point our finger. You make the difference. You make the difference. Let's go, boys. It is the UEFA Europa League final. Liverpool have won um, a fair share of European trophies. Can they add another European trophy to their cabinet? My, uh, Newcastle have Messi and they also have Paul Pogba. Also Ruben Neves. Also Jordan Alba. Also Skrinra. They have a very, very decent team. But here comes the walkout for the UEFA Europa League final. It is Liverpool versus Newcastle, the predicted Europa League 23-24 final. Let's go, people. I mean, obviously, Newcastle didn't do well in the Champions League then. I have just noticed that. Also, to stop this video from going on too long, I'm probably going to skip or cut a lot of these uh, match clips out as well, just so the video isn't going for like an hour. But here's Jordi Alba. Savasly wins the ball. And now here comes Liverpool on the break. Something that Liverpool are very dangerous with. Here's McAllister. The two new signings are linking up. It's Savasly. <laughs> what a break for Liverpool in the opening 10 minutes. It's Savasly to McAllister. Back to Savasly. And it's a goal. The rebuild. Oh my God. It's built. It is built. There's Savasly. Wins it. It gives it to McAllister. I mean, it's a great, great counter attack in the first place as well. Great defending originally from Savaslai, and that is Liverpool 1, Newcastle 0. Here's Savaslai with a quarter. Oh, yeah, people, we don't actually have a set piece routine. I forgot to add that because Liverpool are very, very good at set pieces on this game. So we made sure that we don't have a set piece routine. So you can see here goes from corners. Newcastle scored 13, West Ham 11, City 10. Here's us on five. Of course, with Trent Alexander-Arnold being the best corner taker on this game. And then you've got Virgil van Dijk as well. You will score. Oh, we've just hit the bar. Nunes has just hit the bar from a corner. Yabba yabba do. Here's Colwell with the throw in. Luis Diaz is going to cut inside. Is he going to look for someone? He's looked for Salah, but that's a risky pass. There's Trent now. Trent looks for Salah. Salah slide. Darwin Nunes. It's two. It might be off the assistant. He's talking to... No, no, he's not talking. He's just saying it's a goal. It's 2-0 to Liverpool in the European uh, Europa League final. It's Trent. Trent plays it to Salah. Salah knocks it down to Salah. Salah, Salah slide to Darwin. Darwin, first time finish. 2-0. Sven Botman looks for uh, Neves. 
they have looking to build up. We've put the pressure on. We've made it difficult. Van Dijk wins the ball, but Canati loses it in a dangerous area. He shouldn't be losing it there, but Colwell beats uh, Messi in the air. Here's Diaz, though. Here comes a break. Oh, he could have played that through ball, but he doesn't see it. He's outnumbered. Messi's working hard back there. And it's 3-0. It's Mo Salah, Salah. And this could be game done already. It seems like it's game done in the opening 25 minutes of this Europa League final. Diaz does really well down the left-hand side. He cuts back. Messi wins the ball, but doesn't do well enough. Salah wins the header, and it's a brilliant, brilliant goal. It's now Liverpool 3, Newcastle 0, but they do have a highlight straight away from goal kick. His Pogba just runs straight into trouble there. Does, not, does Pogba not know about the press? Does he not know about the press? Here comes the football again. And as you can see, there's a slight back three here. And then we do have our box midfield with Kone, Trent, uh, Sabaslai, and McAllister. So there's our box midfield. If it, come on, FM, work. Can you click on him? Doesn't want to click on him. But here comes another break. It's Mo Salah. Oh, that's good work from Pogba there. Salah took too long to release it. But we win the ball back. Here's Trent Alexander-Arnold. Kone looks for Salah. Oh! Oh, you can't know. Oh, that's dirty. Oh, that's offside. I was going to say that was an absolute dirty, filthy goal. It's a lovely pass there. Great awareness from <sighs> referee. Are you sure? Are you sure, ref? Are you sure? Referee, are you sure? We have reached half time, where it's now Liverpool 3, Newcastle 0. We are going to tell the boys that we... Uh, we like that first half and Sabasla has played four key passes in that first half. So what I'm going to do now is go to this and I'm going to slow down the pace a little bit. We don't need to go uh, absolute ham in the second half. Should we drop that defense line a little bit? I think that might make sense. And Sabasla has worked really, really hard. I don't want to take him off, but we are going to be looking at his uh, match fitness during the game because we also have an FA Cup final as well. And we can make that sub now. Sabasla off for Harvey Elliott possibly to play in this role we're also going to bring on Thiago a bit a bit of experience you know what the new guys are going to come off I'm sorry to disappoint but the new guys are going to come off here's Sven Botman looks for Pogba it's a little link up between the two Konate has got to turn quicker than that Konate has to read that ball surely Jordi Alba ah oh, that's all on Konate all on Konate how he does not read that ball is actually a shambles he should be reading that ball. He should be cutting that out all day, every day, two times on a Sunday. But now Newcastle have pulled uh, one back. For some reason, it feels like your team just drops their pressure. Like in the first half, we added so much pressure, especially in that situation. And then now the second half has come. It's like we just dropped off. But that is a lovely ball from Ev uh, Elliot there. That's a lovely, lovely goal. Just I was a... Uh, as I was moaning about the uh, pressure off, it just seemed like they just stood off there. You know what? I'm actually going to get stuck in just to make sure they don't stand off again. And then, they, I mean, we scored from it, but Newcastle, they did very, very well to get out of that situation. And we made it a little bit too easy for them. It's now four goals to the one. And it's another highlight. It's Trent, Canate, Elliot, Thiago, Trent, Fabinho, Virgil. You can see the back three there. And then you can see Trent just coming inside to play alongside Fabinho. That's a mm, good ball from Canate. <laughs> Whips in the star win is five. It's game done. Salah, as you can see, getting a lot of assists, but also scoring goals as well. It's game done. It's over, lads. It is over. What, what a win. Salah there out of the wide area. Puts the ball in. Darwin Nunes. It is now 5-1. Declare it. Win that, please, Virgil. Thank you. Here's Fabs. Fabs to Canate. <laughs> that would have been the goal of the season. That would have been the goal of the season. The show enough now. Salah on a 10. Darwin Nunes on 8.9. They just absolutely showed off there in the last minutes. But there is the first, tro second trophy. Second trophy for Liverpool. We have wrapped up the Premier League. And now here is the Europa League for Liverpool as well. Well done, boys. My haircut is a bit dodgy down there. But it is a final. That's one wrapped up. Now let's go and play against Manchester United, which is going to be fairly fairly difficult so congratulations on the win and i will see you at wembley for the fa cup final in just three days 
So here we are, we've gone effectively for the same team, apart from Manu Kone is out, and so is Cole Wilf, uh, Robertson back in, and so to Fabinho. Nunes keeps his start up top as well after his performance in the last cup final, and as you can see, we've gone for the big team away version for this cup final. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. We are going to pump our fists because it's a bit of a derby game. It's a bit of a rival, bit of a rival. Let's go, lads. Let's go. Here comes Alison Becker. We are going to play out from the back. Here's Canate. Canate plays it out wide to Robertson. Robertson looks for Diaz. Diaz runs round the lot with ease. Plays it into Sabaslai. And he hits it first time from the edge of the box. And it goes over the bar. And it is... Uh, it's nil-nil at half time. You can see here Bruno Fernandes is having a very, very good game. If we can stop Bruno, maybe we can stop United. So we want to make sure Bruno is always, always tightly marked. What I didn't see is our passing statistics. I can't tell if it's good or bad. If it's bad, we'll drop it down to slightly higher. I can't actually see. I need to see now. But the game's kicked off. Diaz wins the ball. Here's Diaz. Comes Liverpool. McAllister. Oh, we've got to do better there. Fabinho, well done. Here's Darwin. Sabaslai. McAllister through to Diaz. That's you, Diaz, all day long. It's all day long. It's another assist for McAllister. It's another goal for Liverpool. Great pressure there. Great uh, counter pressing there from Liverpool. We win the ball back. Here's McAllister. Lovely through ball into Diaz. Diaz. Huh, cool and composed. Live, uh, Man United need a rebuild as well. I can imagine a lot of uh, people want to see Onana here with Mason Mount as well. So uh, make sure you drop your recommendations in the comment section. Plays it out wide to Salah. What off? Oh, come on, Salah. On him. On him. That, that's what I'm talking about, Virgil. Diaz, through to Darwin. Darwin, oh, he's at the post. So we are going to go for a different option than Darwin up front. I mean, not based off that chance, by the way. It's just a different a different option up there. And then for McAllister, we're actually going to go for Kone or Hendo. We're going to bring on Hendo, you know, Mr. Reliable Hendo. Mr. Reliable is 1-0 in this FA Cup final. Approach in the last 10 minutes by Hez Robertson with a corner. Look at the... Jot 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 Say, why have you aimed for Jota? And Jota ends up winning the ball. Here's Martinez. Oh no, let's not concede now, though, man. Let's not do it now. We've dominated the second half. It's been all us in the second half. Well done, Canate. Here's Virgil. I mean, because he's on defend, he didn't he didn't uh, pull out there. Oh, he's offside. He's offside. Oh, it's gone awarded. It's gone awarded. It's Diogo Jota. I told you. I am a clock. I'm coming for your job, son. Clock, I'm coming for your job. Oh, it's the right back here. He's that one back with the lot. It's Quadrado. It's Quad Quadrado. Dato. That guy. He, 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 he keeps him on. He keeps him on. Oh, it's lovely. And that is another trophy wrapped up today, lads. It's another one. That is another one. As you can see there in the second half, I did reduce my uh, tempo. And actually, we're doing now better with 51%. I mean, I'm sorry, Klopp, but I've got to take all, pre uh, uh, all credit here, you know. I'm sorry, Klopp. I've got his Trent. His Hendo. Don't get clamped. Don't get clamped, boys. Diaz has been clamped uh, from the ball a couple of times. Oh, he's run the ball back. He's just giving it back. It's a mixed game for Luis Diaz here. It's a mixed game. His Sabah slide, though. Just have a shot. Oh, it's off. that one was offside. That one was offside. That was lovely football. That one was offside. Ah, that would have been pretty good. And um, people, unfortunately, that is the end of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Don't forget in the comment section, drop your recommendations. Who, who I should do more? I mean, which other team should I do? I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I have got an Arsenal one all prepped and sorted as well. I just need to finish the season. Very excited for that one to come out as well. I've done Liverpool. Manchester United is, of course, on the list with Onana and Mason Mount. I will just write that down. And I'll find some other uh, signings to make. Again, you can drop some signing recommendations in the comment section. What positions are Man United looking for? I'm not a Man United fan. It will be nice to hear from some Man United fans as well. But I will see you guys soon. Stay safe. God bless. Don't forget, check out my Patreon. That is a great way to support me. But also come and follow me on Twitch. I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. God bless. Beep.